In this video, I'm going to take you through a full beginner's guide to the Gemini Exchange. By the end of this video, you'll know how to sign up for an account, secure your account, link a bank account and deposit fee into your Gemini account, deposit crypto, buy Bitcoin with the likes of Fear Currency and sell it, save money on fees with Gemini Active Trader and withdraw crypto or Fear from Gemini. I'll also have a timeline in the summary below for those of you who just want to jump to specific parts of this tutorial. For more information on Gemini, please check out everabethelps.co.uk. First up, a little bit about Gemini. The exchange was launched in 2015 in the United States by the Winklevoss twins who rose to fame in 2004 after they sued Mark Zuckerberg over Facebook, and they've now expanded their operations to Europe and Asia. Whether you're an experienced trader or just getting started and buying your first Bitcoin, Gemini has a range of tools to help you buy, sell or store your crypto. First, they've got their exchange, which is a great way of researching the crypto market, buying Bitcoin and other cryptos and helping to build your portfolio. They also have Gemini Mobile, where you can trade your crypto on the go. There's Gemini's safe, secure wallet, which supports all their listed assets. And their more advanced trading platform, Active Trader, which helps users to create more advanced order types and help to reduce fees. With so many tools that Gemini offer, it'll be difficult to cover all of this today. So I'm going to be covering the exchange and Active Trader. So let's jump in and head across to Gemini.com. For those of you that are brand new to Gemini, I'll have a link in the summary that will get you $10 in free Bitcoin when you trade $100 or more. Initially, to create an account, you'll first need to enter your first name, last name, email address and password. And this is where you can also add a promo or referral code. Now, Gemini is a centralised and regulated exchange. Therefore, you'll need to enter in your personal details, such as your name, address, and you'll need to upload some photographic ID. The first thing that we'd recommend doing before you go ahead and start depositing funds into your account is to set up your security. So if you go to your account at the top of the screen, then settings and security, here is where you can set up your mobile phone and two-factor authentication methods, such as using Authy for one-time codes, or you can use security keys such as YubiKey by Yubico, which I've actually got a full tutorial for if you want to find out more. Heading back to the dashboard now, You'll see that to complete setting up your account, you're going to be asked to confirm your email, upload your ID, and then add a funding source to get trading. These are essentially payment methods, which are either bank account via Plaid, which is recommended, bank account manually, which can take up to five days, or via debit card, which can take two days. From here, you can then continue. And you'll need to agree to Plaid having access to personal details, and then continue. You then search for your bank and you'll also need to ensure that you use a crypto friendly bank too that supports the purchase of crypto. If you're from the UK and you want to find out the best crypto friendly banks, we've got a blog post available that we'll link below. And although some of these accounts are listed, I personally had issues with linking Monzo. So in this example, I'm going to choose Revolut, where you'll then be presented with a QR code to scan with a mobile to authenticate your device. You'll then be prompted to authorise your banking app with Plaid and select the required bank account. Once complete, your bank account will then be linked. And as I said, you can also set up bank details manually or connect a debit card, which is just for crypto purchases. So now that your bank account has been set up and linked, how do you get your funds into Gemini? Well, if we choose transfer from the top of the screen and then deposit into Gemini, you'll then reach the transfer funds screen. The first thing we need to do is select the currency that we want to deposit. And from here, I have the option of GBP or Euros. Or there's a whole host of cryptocurrencies that you can also deposit. And your currency options may be different depending on your location. For the moment, we're going to choose GBP as I'm from the UK. And I'll show you the other options in a moment. If we then press continue, you'll be presented with all the information required to start a GBP transfer. So at this point, you'll need to head across to your online banking platform, send or transfer some funds to the bank account details that are shown on your screen. And a really important part of sending your deposit is to include your account reference code in the memo, instructions or reference or description field. 
This code is used to match deposits to your Gemini account. And without it, deposits may be delayed or they could possibly be returned if they can't be mapped. Once you've sent your funds, these will then appear under your portfolio under trading balances and pound sterling. If you wanted to trade with crypto instead, you can deposit crypto into Gemini. So to find your wallet address, go to transfer and deposit into Gemini. Then select the cryptocurrency from the list. In this example, I'm going to select Bitcoin and I'll then be presented with the associated QR code and address for Bitcoin. And make sure that if you're sending Bitcoin that you are sending it to a Bitcoin address. If you send Ethereum to a Bitcoin address, for example, you will risk losing your crypto. And you can copy your Gemini wallet address from here and send your funds across to it. Here you have a list of cryptocurrencies available that you can buy or sell. And you can filter these by top movers, top traded, etc. If we click onto a specific crypto, and in this example, I'll choose Bitcoin again. You can then see the crypto name and its current price, plus how it's changed in terms of percentages over specific periods of time. We can also add it to a watch list or set up price alerts for major price movements. Then there's information in relation to the crypto, its market cap and a description. Plus it also shows information in relation to your holding. For example, the quantity that you're holding, its value, portfolio percentage, and the average buy price that's made on Gemini. As you can see, this is an existing account on Gemini for me. And I've actually held this account for quite some time. Therefore, my average buy is pretty low. Then over on the right hand side of the screen is where you can make a trade. From here, you can buy, sell and convert. Let's start with buy. First, you'll need to set the frequency, which could be a one time trade, daily, weekly, monthly, etc. I'm going to select once. And you then put in the amount that you'd like to purchase, where you can manually enter this in, or you can choose from the predefined amounts. Then choose continue. Well, you'll then be prompted to select your payment method. My GBP balance does automatically appear, and you can also add payment. Whereas you can see, debit card is the fastest method. However, I wouldn't personally recommend buying Bitcoin with credit or debit card, as the charges with this really do add up as you'll be paying 3.49% of the total purchase amount. As I've transferred my funds to my GBP balance, I'm gonna select that now. It will then show the order amount in GBP and Bitcoin, and then the transaction fee, which is either £2.25 or 2.25%. And this fee will depend on your trading size and your location. Now, although this doesn't seem like a huge amount, these fees do certainly start to add up. At the moment, by creating an order through the exchange, you're going to be paying the rate or the price of Bitcoin that's defined by Gemini, which will be inflated. And this is due to the convenience of how easy it is to purchase your Bitcoin in this way. As you can see, the price for one Bitcoin on Gemini is showing up as £31,236.38. And the live crypto price is actually £30,827.84. So the prices definitely differ there. And you'll also find that the fees that you'll pay will depend on how you access your trade, whether that be via the web application, mobile or via Active Trader, which is something I'm going to show you in a moment. And in this way, you help to reduce your fees to a maximum of 0.40%. But if you're happy with the ease of use and paying the rate as shown here, you can then just go ahead and confirm. I'm not going to go ahead with this purchase, as I'm going to show you how to do this over on Active Trader. And if you want to sell your Bitcoin instead, this can be done in the same way. You simply enter the amount that you'd like to sell in Bitcoin. And when you review your order, you can view the fees again and your Bitcoin will then sell immediately at the Gemini market price. There's then the option to convert, which is the process of swapping between two different cryptocurrencies. For example, if you wanted to swap from Bitcoin to Ethereum or another crypto, and you simply enter in the amount, review your order and confirm to swap your crypto. But let's take a look at how we can reduce some of these fees now, and that's by using their trading platform, Active Trader. I can reach Gemini Active Trader by heading to my account, then Settings, and if I scroll down, I can choose Active Trader from the Trading Interface options. Then if I click on to Back to Gemini Exchange in the top left, I'm then presented with Active Trader, which is seen as the more advanced trading platform, 
but if you learn to use it, you can definitely help yourself to save on some fees. And it's very similar to the likes of Coinbase Pro that's offered by Coinbase. I'll cover a full tutorial of Active Trader at a later date, but let's go ahead and look at creating an order here. With Active Trader, you can pull across your balances from Gemini by clicking onto Balances at the top and then choosing Trade. Next, we have to select our market at the top of the screen. And our market is essentially us selecting the type of crypto that we want to buy with the currency that we want to pay for it with. And this could be Bitcoin and a fear or traditional currency like GBP, Euros or US dollars, or it could be crypto to crypto trades. If for example, you had some Bitcoin and you wanted to trade that for Ethereum. If I select Bitcoin and GBP, meaning that I want to buy Bitcoin with Great British Pounds, it will show me my available balance to trade with in terms of the markets that I've selected. You'll also notice that the screen is now populated with information in relation to the Bitcoin and GBP market. I've got price charts and graphs, order books on the right hand side of the screen, which are flashing with all the potential orders currently going through in terms of buy or ask at the top and sell or bids at the bottom. I can then select the type of order from the drop down, which includes the likes of limit, stop limit, maker or cancel, immediate or cancel, fill or kill, or a simple market order. When we were looking at buying Bitcoin on the Gemini exchange a moment ago, we only had the option of immediate market order, which automatically filled at the price that Gemini defined. Whereas with Active Trader, you can create orders allowing you to define the price that you'd like to pay for your Bitcoin or whatever crypto you've selected. And the fees that you'll pay will depend on a maker take a fee. If I place an order at the current market value and is therefore completed immediately, I'm deemed as a taker of the market as I'm going to be taking the current market price and my fee is therefore 0.4%. However, if I become a maker of the market and I define a new price that's not immediately matched by an order on the order book, I pay less at 0.2%. And this is where the likes of a limit order can come into place. So let's select that from the list now. And in the price here, I'll be defining the price that I want to pay. And I can type that into here. Or I can select a price from the order book and then manually edit it. I'm going to state that I want to pay £31,000 for my Bitcoin. I can then enter in the amount of Bitcoin or GBP that I'd like to get. So if I enter in £100 so that it's the same as my previous order in terms of size, you can see here at the bottom that the fee is going to be 40 pence as opposed to that £2.25 that I was paying over on Gemini Exchange. As I said, it's not a huge difference, but these can eat into your profits, especially when you are dealing with larger orders. So let's go ahead and place the order now, which then appears under your open orders at the bottom of the screen. Now, if you have made a mistake, or if the market changes dramatically, you can cancel open orders before they've been filled, and then you can then try again. You can do this by hovering over your open order and then selecting Cancel under Status. When your order is open, you may also see it appearing on the order book to the right with a circle beside it. And you simply then just wait for the market to reach the price that you've set. And once your order has been met, it will move to completed orders. Your crypto will then be available from your portfolio in the same way as it would if we were using the standard Gemini exchange. Now, if, for example, you'd held your crypto for a while and you wanted to cash out back into your fiat currency, the same process can be used for selling your crypto. So if we select sell, again, you can select your order types. Enter the amount that you'd like to sell your Bitcoin for, which is likely to be above the current market price, and then enter the amount that you'd like to sell in either GBP or Bitcoin. You can then place your sell order by choosing sell. And again, you can cancel an open sell order until it's filled. Once it has been filled, you can obviously then cash out of the platform and withdraw. And as you can see, there are a lot more trading order options on the Active Trader, but I just wanted to show you how you can save yourself some money from just simply trying different order types. So let's head back to the basic Gemini Exchange now, where we can view our portfolio so that we can then take a look at withdrawing from Gemini. One thing we'd recommend doing, whether or not you're holding crypto or fear on a cryptocurrency trading platform, is to withdraw it when you're not trading with it. A cryptocurrency exchange with lots of assets on it is a far more likely target for hackers. If you're holding crypto on an exchange, it's recommended to store it in an external wallet 
where you're going to have access to your private keys. One of the safest ways to store your crypto is using a hardware wallet such as a Ledger or a Trezor, and I'll have some links in the summary for those. I'll show you how to withdraw crypto first, then how to withdraw your fiat or traditional currency back to a bank account. So if we want to withdraw our crypto, choose Transfer from the top of the screen, then Withdraw from Gemini. From the cryptocurrency dropdown, select the crypto that you want to withdraw, and in this example that's going to be Bitcoin, and then Continue. We'll then need to paste in our Receive or the deposit address for our external wallet or platform into this section under Transfer to. And please ensure that if you're withdrawing Bitcoin, you are sending that to a Bitcoin address, and if you're sending Ethereum, it's to an Ethereum address. As if you send to the incorrect type of address, you do risk losing your funds. We'd also recommend sending a smaller test amount first if this is the first time you're withdrawing to this address. With cryptocurrencies, transactions are non-retractable. Also, double-check the first, middle and last three letters of an address, just to check that everything's correct. Then when you're happy, you can continue. You may then be asked the reason for your withdrawal, which you can select from the list and then continue. You'll then need to enter in the amount that you'd like to withdraw, and this will be in Bitcoin, or you can withdraw the max. And then request the withdrawal. Crypto withdrawal fees will all depend on the amount that you're withdrawing, and it's on a crypto by crypto basis. But generally, if you are withdrawing less than 10 per month, it's free. So let's look at withdrawing GBP to a bank account now instead. So from the dashboard again, if we choose transfer, withdraw from Gemini, and then from the currency drop down, I'll obviously select GBP, as we've sold our Bitcoin for GBP. And then continue. From the withdraw to list, your bank account that we deposited from earlier should then appear as we've linked it. If not, you'll be prompted to link as we did earlier. If we then select that and continue, you'll be prompted to enter in the amount of GBP or fiat currency that you'd like to withdraw. Or you can withdraw the max. And wire transfers are free to withdraw. When you're happy with all the details and that they're correct, you can request withdrawal. So that concludes my walkthrough of the Gemini Exchange. And I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like, hit the subscribe button, and please do head over to my website at everybithelps.co.uk for more tips, reviews, and step-by-step -step guides. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.